Hello, my name is Fiona Sugden and I work for the Environment Agency as the Project Manager for the Leeds Flood Alleviation Scheme Natural Flood Management Project. Today, together with my colleague Una McMacken, we're going to speak about the project and how we've approached stakeholder engagement. Phase 2 of the scheme is taking a catchment wide approach to reducing flood risk in Leeds. It is delivering one of the largest natural flood management programmes in the country. The project is delivering a range of NFM measures across 700 km square of the river or catchment. The team is working with over 150 stakeholders and gathering over 300 data sets from 32 different organisations. Our aim is to plant in the region of 2 million trees. The works span across six local authority areas and one national park. These include Leeds, Bradford, Craven, Pendle, Lancashire, North Yorkshire County Council and the Yorkshire Dales National Park. It is the largest NFM programme in the UK and is being delivered on behalf of Leeds City Council. We are delivering a variety of NFM interventions to capture and slow the flow of flood water locally, as well as reducing the flood risk to Leeds. Within the 700 km square catchment area, more than 150 brilliant organisations and stakeholders aim to improve the environment that we're living and working in. In light of this, it is critical that we work together to really harness the experience, relationships and expertise that we've all spent so long developing. Whilst there are hundreds of partners working to deliver similar benefits across the upper air catchment, the fact that our project is the first to encapsulate the whole area means that it's our job to bring everyone together so that we can build successful and effective relationships. This will help us meet our objectives and share the vast array of benefits. It's important to acknowledge that it hasn't always been easy and that we're all still learning. The Leeds FAST NFM project is entering an environment where teams and individuals have worked for a long time to become embedded within the cultural landscape, and we don't underestimate the power and value of that. Although at times this has felt like a challenge, we have worked closely with our partners and stakeholders to form our own relationships and build on the great work that has provided us with the foundations to help us deliver our project. Another challenge associated with the scale of the catchment is that whilst 9% of land ownership is large estate owners such as the National Trust and Yorkshire Water, the rest is made up of smaller, mostly independent landowners. The Environment Agency does not intend to purchase land for this project and as such, another significant challenge centres around our reliance on landowners. In order to overcome this challenge, the project first needs to identify who landowners are and then needs to persuade them to sacrifice valuable agricultural areas to tree planting or other solutions. To enable us to understand and help engage with the remaining 91% of the catchment, the Environment Agency have contracted with the White Rose Forest, whose members already work closely with the community within the catchment and have a wealth of knowledge within the area. In addition to this landowner engagement framework, to date there has been focus on estates engagement, including Broughton Hall, the National Trust and the Brownlee Triathlon site. We're also working closely with other internal teams, such as the Upper Air Project, who have spent the last 10 years working within the catchment and have extensive experiences and a variety of long-standing relationships. Because of the scale of the catchment, the GIS platform that we have developed is key to us understanding and planning our work within the catchment. To understand the catchment, and identify where opportunities and constraints are, we have gathered around 300 data sets from 32 different organisations. This has enabled us to work with all of the local authorities to agree an approach to EIA screening. We've also developed new tools to streamline site development and delivery. For example, 
We've created a heritage and buried archaeology risk layer for the whole catchment from data obtained from local authorities and the National Trust. This allows us to develop designs which consider heritage from the outset, rather than having to consult the local authority on each individual site and potentially have to change designs based on those consultations. As well as enabling us to manage the vast amount of data about the catchment in one place, the GIS platform also facilitates coordinated and efficient design and delivery processes. Given the size of the catchment and the variety of stakeholders that we're working with, developing a consistent approach was critical in managing and recording what could be hundreds of sites. The platform will do this by helping us to identify hazards and utilities, providing design guidance, designing concepts in real time with landowners, facilitating virtual site visits to save time and carbon, and providing detailed monitoring tools. Just as we've worked with partners before us to gather their learning and share their experiences to help us develop our processes and plans, we hope to be able to give back to that community by increasing the evidence base around NFM. Given the scale of our work, quantifying the impacts of a multitude of sites of differing sizes, locations and characteristics within the context of a dynamic and constantly changing environment is difficult but hugely important. Doing this not only demonstrates the benefits of our own programme but for the future of nature-based solution delivery in England. To address this we're working with a variety of research partners to design and implement monitoring strategies across our sites. A flagship site for research is being developed at Broughton Hall a 3,000 acre estate within the catchment where we're working together with the landowner, the White Rose Forest and the DBA Trust to deliver significant natural recovery, natural flood management and woodland creation as well as an industry leading research hub to gather data. This research will cover not only flood reduction and carbon sequestration but also the various bioeconomic, habitat creation socioeconomic and mental well-being benefits that nature-based solutions have to offer. We're also working with ICASP and the University of Leeds at the Brownlee Triathlon Centre to deliver a range of NFM and research and educational opportunities to develop an NFM centre of excellence close to the city. If the programme can work to strengthen the understanding around these many benefits, we hope that we can contribute towards the increasing use of nature-based solutions and natural flood management in the future and further facilitate the creation of a more resilient environment. Thank you for listening. We'll now be happy to answer any questions.